Vreau să vă prezint, doamnelor și domnilor, o lucrare care ne dă fiori reci și aparține domnului uh, dr. Stephen Quay, care este unul dintre uh, cei top 1% oameni de știință din întreaga lume. A publicat peste 360 de lucrări, citat în peste, de peste 10.000 de ori, fiind plasat, cum spuneam, în top 1% dintre oamenii de știință din întreaga lume. Are peste 87 de brevete în Statele Unite cel puțin șapte produse farmaceutice aprobate de FDA care au salvat 80 de milioane de oameni. Uh, Stephen Quay uh, face o analiză și o lucrare pe 192 de pagini în care uh, demonstrează că SARS-CoV-2 nu este natural. 99,8% sigur că virusul este produs de laborator. Asta este concluzia uh, acestei lucrări de 192 de pagini preluată de Yahoo Finance și nu numai de Yahoo Finance. Gazda intermediară este necunoscută până astăzi, unic în lume, ca o gazdă intermediară să nu fie cunoscută până astăzi, dă și exemple cu privire la H1N1, MERS și alte uh, asemenea, uh, alții asemenea virus și în cât timp au descoperit gazda intermediară. În plus, în lucrare se vorbește și despre o interesantă legătură între SARS-CoV-2 cu un adenovirus. Atenție! Uh, E vorba și despre un vaccin pentru adenovirus în studiul la Wuhan în decembrie 2019. Steven Quay își prezintă lucrarea într-un scurt material video. Al e greu de prezentat, 192 de pagini de a fi rapăr într-o emisiune. Iată ce susține în rezumat Steven Quay. I am Dr. Stephen Quay and this is an introduction to my paper. A Bayesian analysis concludes beyond a reasonable doubt that SARS-CoV-2 is not a natural zoonosis, but instead is laboratory derived. How did COVID-19 start? There are two main hypotheses. One, the zoonotic origin believes that it began in bats as a reservoir host and then jumped into an intermediate host, which is currently unknown. Those that believe it began in a laboratory consider the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the Wuhan Centers for Disease Control the likely candidates. But where do we stand at this point in time? As a reminder, with SARS-2003, it took four months to understand that the intermediate host was a civet cat. With respect to MERS, 2015, it was nine months before we knew that the camel was responsible. With SARS-CoV-2, after 13 months, we still don't have a candidate for the intermediate host. This Bayesian analysis is derived from work that was done by Thomas Bayes in the uh, 1700s. He was an English statistician, philosopher, and Presbyterian minister. You may not have heard of Bayesian analysis, but I know you've used it before. It's, it's commonly used in professional sports. At the beginning of the baseball season, we all want to predict who will win the World Series. On the left-hand column here, based on the team's prior history, their new players, whether someone is injured, there is a preseason ranking. Now, on the right, at the end of the regular season, when all of the games have been played, but before the playoffs begin, you can see that the order of the teams has changed. What was Team C in third place before the season is now finished the regular season at the top. But in this hypothetical, I've also indicated that Team D will win the World Series uh, as a reminder that the Bayesian analysis is only a probability of, of a future event without a certainty. So in this Bayesian analysis paper that I've written, I started with probabilities that were based in part on work done by the WHO investigator, Dr. Peter, Peter Daszak and others. For this starting probability, I set the likelihood of a zoonotic origin at 98.8%, a laboratory origin at 1.2%. I then presented 26 different evidence sets that were considered individually and impacted the overall probability. 
This table at the right is obviously very difficult to read. It's contained in the paper, uh, along with the other 190 pages that go into great detail on this evidence analysis. At the end of the process, when 26 different evidence sets had been evaluated, the concluding probability was that a zoonotic origin was 0.2%, a laboratory origin 99.8%. This is greater than the typical 95 to 98% expected for beyond a reasonable doubt uh, in the legal standard. In addition, the paper contains an analysis of adenovirus vaccine sequences that were found in lavage specimens from five patients with COVID in December 2019, uh, analyzed by the Wuhan Institute of Virology. This slide shows the typical adenovirus vaccine uh, in a drawing here with the uh, 1 through 990 being the adenovirus portion. The spike protein uh, immunogen is in the middle in red, uh, and the tail of the 3 prime adenovirus uh, vaccine is shown on the right. And as you can see in the, in the uh, bars here, the, the sequence reads, the contiguous sequence reads, run from the adenovirus section through and into the, the, the uh, immunogen, and then into the three prime end of the adenovirus. So this is very strong evidence that an adenovirus was, was present in these early patients. This, in, this concludes my analysis of a Bayesian uh, analysis that concludes beyond a reasonable doubt that SARS-CoV-2 was not natural, but instead is laboratory derived. Uh, and this presentation is dedicated to the over 100 million people worldwide who have uh, contracted COVID-19 and the greater than 2 million deaths. Uh, we hope that this helps uh, in, in, in getting to the bottom of where this, where this began.